So from here, life for me just became about hustling. I had to figure out how to get us out of this crazy hole that my dad threw us in. I mean, I was in major debt. My family was in major debt. I mean, I tried to go to ASU, did not work out at all. I mean, six months in, flunked out, dropped out, couldn't do it at all. And I just was like, I need to find as many jobs as I can. And so it was golf courses, hotels. I was training high school and college athletes doing whatever I could to basically make money and not just make money for the debt. Well, to make money for my addiction, right? Because again, I could not even face my life. I couldn't face the truth of what my dad did, the situation that I was in, what my mom was in. I mean, my mom had major back surgery, like rods and pins in her back a week before my dad left. And I'm watching my mom get on her hands and knees to clean floors, to do whatever she could to try to make some form of money. And here I was, I'm like, I just gotta hustle. My sister, she gets two, three jobs. I get two, three jobs. And it's just this life of hustling. But I couldn't deal with it. I had to medicate myself on a daily basis with something to actually function. And this was my life for a few years. And throughout this, I kind of began to distance myself from my family. It was interesting. I couldn't deal with my own brokenness and I was ashamed. And I began to slowly pull myself away from my family and enter deeper into this life of the world. I remember as this goes on for a few years, there's just this restlessness. I'm not happy. Now, even though I'm going for everything that the world says brings happiness, I was like, man, I want more. And I was like, I wanna get back to school. I need to figure out a better way to make money. Like, I just wanna make something of myself. And so I remember I was thinking about this of like, man, I, there's gotta be a greater purpose than what I'm doing right now. And I was like, hmm, man, I need to find a job where I can work less, I can make more money, and then I can go to school, get the degree, and go for what I wanna go for, and my life will be so much better. And then, boom, it hit me, the great idea, the idea that would absolutely change my life and circumstances. What was that? Let's become a bartender. That's right, that was my great idea. If I can become a bartender, everything will be okay. And so, that's what I did. I began to search endlessly to a, for a bar so that I could become a bartender and solve all my problems. So I remember I went to Old Town Scottsdale and if you're familiar with Old Town Scottsdale, there is just a ton of bars within this like half mile radius and you can kind of bar hop and bar hop. And so I just kind of went to all the bars and just started applying. And I finally got an interview at Saddle Ranch. Basically this rock and roll Western mechanical bull bar in Old Town Scottsdale. Uh, and so, yeah, I had my interview. There's around like, I don't know, 40, 50 people to interview and there were two spots available. One was actually to be a bull operator. And so my thought was, well, normally bars will hire from within than from without most of the time. So if I can just get my foot in the door, mm, I got a chance to be the bartender. So I was like, let's be a bull operator. I can do that. I can like, you know, ride a bull, scream out loud, talk to girls, get them on the bull. Like that was basically the role of a bull operator. Like you're to go around and talk to girls and get people on the bull. I got this. So I applied, got the job. Now you have to remember, I am still absolutely broken. I mean, I am angry. I've never dealt with the situation with my dad. I mean, I literally just lived as if my dad was dead. No communication, no nothing, right? And I just packed everything down and I acted like it never happened. But inside, I was so angry, I was bitter, I was broken, but I just had this mask on the entire time. So much of my life was about just medicating to get by. And so here I am, I now go into the bar. Now, I'm talking. Lifestyle of the bar and what you have access to, man, my, I like went from like a six to like a 10 within a matter of weeks. I mean, put it this way. I was a kid in a candy store and I had a full pocket of cash and I bought up and ate everything. I mean, I fell for everything, that entire lifestyle. I mean, from 
greater in depth than drugs to alcohol, promiscuity, just gave my life to the world, to the lifestyle of the bar, way more than I was before. And now remember, I was bull operating, but my goal and dream, right, was to be a bartender. That was the reality. If I can be a bartender, then all my problems were gonna be completely solved, bright idea. And so what I do? Well, I'm bull operating, but I'm gonna bar back on the side. I'm gonna learn how to bartend on the side as well on my own time. And then slowly but surely, I was given opportunities. And I started bull operating less, bar backing less, and then just completely bartending, right? From Tuesdays to Friday to Saturday nights and picking different days and bam, I was in it. I was living the lifestyle that I believed would not only bring me happiness, but it'd solve all my problems financially. Out of this like crazy rut and I'd find my purpose and man, I'd be doing it. I remember one Saturday night, so Saddle Ranch at this time was nuts. I mean, there was, it was always packed. Right, it was always like standing room, lines out the door down Scottsdale Road. It was crazy place to be. When you're bartending and there's that many people, like listen, you don't have time to like just talk to a ton of people. Like your head's in a well, you're making drinks, you're going from one person to the next. And listen, you don't know what you want. You're like, okay, sorry, next person. And you just keep moving, right? So, and I remember one night I was making drinks, heads in a well, going for it. And all of a sudden I physically, just feel myself pushed back. And as I get pushed back, everything goes slow. I mean, literally to the point that I like look out and I'm watching people like grab their drinks in slow motion. Even like the bowl itself was like, like up and down, super slow crazy packed outside in the outside the patio bar upstairs bar was super packed everything slowed down and i'll never forget i say to myself i have everything that the world says brings me happiness i have as much money as i need I have this lifestyle of drugs and alcohol, this lifestyle of promiscuity with women, and there was even like a fame. It was crazy. People would come up to me and they're like, I wish I was you. I wish I had your life. And I was like, you don't even know me. And here I was, I have everything that the world says brings me happiness. And I say to myself, and yet I am more broken, I'm more lonely, and I flat out hate who I am. And so for the first time in six years, 1 a.m., Saturday night, Saddle Ranch on Scottsdale Road, I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, I have lived apart from you for six years and it has gotten me to a place far worse than when I left you. I'm done. What do you want with my life? I'm back. I remember I, I couldn't be there anymore. I had to leave. I mean, I couldn't even take the atmosphere. I reached my breaking point and I just left. I quit. I quit the bar. And it was so funny. I remember um, a part of my own vanity and desire to be loved, approved of, appreciated, to feel good enough, right? Because remember, my dad was like, you're not good enough to be my son. So totally moved in perfectionism and trying to earn and prove myself to everyone around me. Here I was in the bar and I was like, man, if I can just get to be bar one, everything is going to be amazing, right? So there were multiple numbers, right, or in multiple places in the bar, right? I was bar three. Bar one, you're the best bartender, right? You are the best looking bartender. You're the fastest bartender. You're good to go, right? Because that's kind of the first place that you would go. And that's the first person that you're going to see when you walk into the bar. So you got to make a good impression, right? Bar one, that was, that was where to be. Making more money, you're kind of like it. And like I said, in my vanity, I was like, not only do I want to become a bartender, man, I want to be bar, bar one, right? That was my goal. And I'm bar three, and I'll never forget, I go in to quit. And no joke, 
The moment I go into quit, my manager comes up to me and he's like, Frankie. I'm like, yeah. He's like, what's up? He's like, you're bar one. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you are bar one from now on. And I'll tell you right now, it was, it was literally this moment where it's like the evil one like handed me. Like, here it is. Here was like my fruit, right? Like, if you just but serve me, here you go. You can have it. You can have bar one. All your problems will be solved. Here it is, right? And I'll never forget, by the grace of Jesus Christ, I looked at my manager and I just said, I quit. I'm done. I'm out of here. And I just left. Praise be to Jesus Christ that he gave me the strength in that moment because there it was. Literally what I said would bring me happiness. Here's that's gonna solve my problems. It was given to me right here. I'm so grateful that I said no. So after I quit, I was very much like, well, what do I do now, right? I mean, literally uh, six years, no prayer, no nothing, right? I'm definitely the type of person that I'm all in. When I'm all in, I'm all in. I wasn't like, you know, a toe or a foot in God and the rest of myself in the world. I was like, I have zero, zero part in God and everything within the world. And now I'm like, uh, I can't deal with the world. I need to be all in God, but what do I do? I have no idea where to start, where to begin. I needed guidance, I needed counsel. And so I was really blessed uh, in my family. We have a priest. He's in Baltimore, Maryland, Father Charles Canterna, Chucky, as I call him. And so I just literally booked a plane ticket, flew out to Baltimore, and I stayed in the rectory. And I was like, Chucky, uh, there is no no. I need guidance. I need counsel. I will do whatever you want me to do. I just need help. 